Welcome to the Builders Masterclass on Castle and City Compatibility. I'm Nate and I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips and tricks for advanced hybrid building using our Fieldstone and Castle pieces together. Let's take a look. So our castle and city builder systems were developed in tandem, so there's a ton of synergy within, and some of it's somewhat hidden. We're going to start by looking at our bridges and bridge bases. So this was a kind of a strange looking piece. This is the small tower bridge base. Uh, we have a small one, a large one, and a city builder one. And they have a bunch of things that these can do. So let's take a look. First off, you can of course attach any of our various bridge pieces and then extend these out. We have extensions and the like and then connect to another. You can attach our stone balconies and do that. But the fun part is when you start connecting different size towers, different type towers, or connecting to something that's not a tower. So the baseline, this is kind of standard issue uh, bridge bases. We have a four inch tower over here, to a six inch tower over here. Each has a bridge base wall in there a pair of the four inch bridges in there and then it's all topped with crenellations to make a fortified bridge going across. Uh, that's sort of what you generally expect to do with these. But you can also connect to any city builder building something like this. So you could take any city builder building pop in the city builder bridge base side. We throw one of the uh, small two inch bridge segment and then you can connect that there. Then of course this, this doesn't have to be a tower, right? This could be a whole building or the beginning of a wall segment or the like. Just like the uh, this curved tower bridge bases, you can use this bridge base to attach a balcony. We have a Fieldstone balcony pack that actually provides all the pieces you need to do this sort of build. Also, if you don't want to use your bridge attached to another tower, you could use it as an entranceway. So you could do something like this. So you build some sort of outcropping here. We'll take the ramp from the stone bridge pack, put that on here. Take the two inch extension also in that pack, pop that on. Let's use the bridge extension, the big four inch, something there, and we'll slide our tower in. Now you have a, uh, you can have a cool entryway to your tower. Maybe this is a lonely watchtower out in the water. Uh, you could also do the same gag, fly in a city builder building and do the same, uh, same gag with city builder building. This is a little less, uh, of an ostentatious entryway. Maybe you could sneak it out to the water a little more if you want. You could do something like this. And then you could, this could be, you could build a whole building, right? You could be a whole big stone or stone and Tudor building from here, or this could be uh, the beginning of your castle, right? You could build castle walls out like this, or maybe this is the beginning of a tower keep and the like, or maybe this is a building that you then build the tower off of. Uh, but however you crack it, this is a, a way to connect sort of bridges or entrances into uh, your buildings and do some sort of neat place to fight, right? This is a very dynamic place for a fight uh, because it's dangerous, right? There is a, there's a bridge with no railings. We don't have a lot of railings in Dwarven Forge Royal. Put armor it up if you want. Lots of options. Now let's look at the suspended parapet piece. This is another interesting piece of geometry from our castles line. Uh, this lets you create bartizans and there's some really interesting ways to attach round towers to square buildings. With this adapter, you can pop it into uh, any of your corner walls and use it to hang off the corner of a wall. Uh, but even more interestingly, you can attach it to our city builder buildings. So this is an integral city builder post in here. So it lets you do, let's say we have this cool fortified 8x8 building here. If we want, pop off this corner. Let's get in and see if we can do this non-destructively. So everything's on here is on a, uh, on a roof platform, so we can 
move the battlements around easily. I'm going to pop off this corner. And we're going to pop in the suspended parapet and see what happens. Get out. So we'll slot in these walls. So once that's in place, we can slide our crenellations back. Then with this, we can take our curved crenellations. Boom. Boom. And pop in the floor. Boom. Now you have a neat little bar design on the corner of your building. Uh, if you want to get fancier, because this already looks cool, we can take that off. We have a we have a roof platform here, so I'm gonna put the three-quarter roof platform, and we call this the Pac-Man. Right, pop the Pac-Man in there. And then you can throw, let's use one with a door here so we can get in. We're going to throw the door over here. I have the there's this little floor backfill piece we can drop in there. And then take a full roof platform, throw your four crenellations up there, and now you have that whole little parapet up there, suspended off the side, right? And you've got a door to get you in, a little tower there. If you want to get even more ambitious, you could even throw on some of the matriculated battlements on top. Uh, I will warn you, though, this, uh, the weight of this over time, if your session's too long, it's going to start making the, uh, the Bartizan piece uh, bend off the base. If you want to get Wild, you can actually crazy glue in that base so you have a permanent base that you want to use every time you do this gag and then you can build some big hefty towers. And <laughs> Heck, at that point, you can, uh, you can throw a roof on it and everything. So you want to get wild. But it's very fun to have something cantilevered off the side of your building. We can take the same 8x8 building and go up and further. So this is a fun trick here. So I'm going to fly off all of our crenellations. We're going to bring back this 8x8 roof platform. Boom, pop that in there. We're going to need this in a big way. And I have, I have double corner posts in the center here making the thing, uh, giving some support in the middle because we're going to need that also. We're going to take a 6 inch tower. We're going to center that in the middle. And then we're going to wrap around here. Bump, 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 bump. I'm going to take the batter bases and put those all the way around the outside. Like that. We can even, let's spruce them up, put some pole accessories in there, make it look sassy. And then we can go up and up and up. All right, so we can put full, boof, full tower on there. Let's rotate that balcony up so we can see it. All right, so now you have this really neat square 8x8 base that tapers up into a round tower. If we want to take it one step further, we can combine both tricks. So I still have this Vardazan over there, right? We still have the suspended parapet over there. Luckily, I built, when I built this tower, I left a door in there. So I can take the piece out of the batter base, have a little door out, and now I can take these and have a, a neat little fortified balcony over there. So now we have a bunch of really interesting geometry, right? This would be a really fun place to stage a combat where there's a couple of ways that players could sneak into the castle or defend it or areas they would have to defend. Uh, but it's a very interesting and unique looking building we've created. Continuing in our bridges theme, Let's look at the Bridge of Valor. This was a piece we released with a city builder system, and it's probably our strangest looking piece in the whole thing. Right? On its own, with the trapdoor, it looks a little wild. But fundamentally, it lets you put any 
city builder wall you want in here. You can put ruined walls look really neat, or window walls, in this case the abbey window walls. Uh, and then these sides slot into any uh, city builder wall, and you can put a roof on top. So in use, it looks something like this. Uh, it's four inches wide, so it can span over our alley tiles like such. Uh, like. So this is, a, this is how you would generally use the Bridge of Valor. However, there's a couple of fun little tricks you can do with it. One, you can replace the top. If you want to make this a little more fortified, you can take off the closed roof and bring in some of our rampart crenellations. So now it's a little armored. Of course, it's a little hard to get there, so let's swap these walls out. We'll put some doors on either side. Oop. So now it's a uh, ramparts that you could patrol back and forth over there. Um, you can also use it if you're trying to make neat, if you're going for the full fortified thing. Let's say we uh, like this, add some battlements over here, swap out those battlements. We can connect one of our castle towers using the same. Uh, same bridge base trick we were using before. So we drop into bridge base, throw some crenellations on, and now we have the start of a uh, some sort of fortified multi-tower sort of keep situation. Something that would be very fun to explore with your players. You can also uh, connect this bridge of valor to our insert slot wall for the castle. We'll show that a bit later. Uh, but there's one last trick we can show with this thing. So finally, there's one last thing we can do with this Bridge of Valor. Our double door, two by four double door arch uh, from the Dungeon of Doom, which you can find in Zaltar's game room and in its own pack. Uh, you can remove the arch, you can remove the doors, and this now fits a, any city builder wall. So in this case, we're gonna build a little dungeon into the side of a uh, mountain here, and this could go forever, right? This could be the beginning of your mega dungeon. The old ruins outside uh, the dungeon, and then we'll slot in our Bridge of Valor. So we'll slot in our Bridge of Valor there, and voila, we now have this ruined exterior entrance that will transition us into our dungeon, and you take your players down on into the dungeon. So you can even use your Bridge of Valor to connect yourself to uh, some old dungeon pieces. So let's look at crenellations and battlements. Of course, in the real world, crenellations and battlements are the same thing, but for us, we're using them to differentiate between two uh, pretty different product lines that are doing the same thing. So these are crenellations and these are battlements. Let me show you the difference. So crenellations have basically a two inch footprint, but they have a tiny bit of overhang. So they hang over the front of a wall with those little corbels. Uh, so it just has a little more depth to it. Um, they're pretty high, but the, uh, the space between them is low enough that it's waist high on a mini. Uh, and they just sort of pop on top of anything from a roof to a wall, like a variety of uses. We have this sort of one-sided versions, and then we have the rampart crenellations, which have on both sides, which you can use. We love these on the castle walls. Battlements are our big, beefier version. Right? These are machicolated. They have a big one-inch overhang. Uh, they have a three-inch footprint. They go up easily as high as a mini. Uh, if, you put, if you put two of them together, they can take uh, a variety of different shutters in between, uh, or like a, uh, an oil bucket to dump boiling oil on those down below. They actually have murder holes all the way through and arrow slits all the way through and have a much sort of uh, heavier fortified profile to them. Uh, so there's a variety of ways to use uh, both our crenellations and our balance. Let's take a look. So here we've arrayed out uh, mostly just crenellations on a sample build. I don't know exactly what this is, but it's going to kind of show you all the bits. So we have a bunch of rampart crenellations here. Uh, we have our small curved crenellations here. Most of the crenellations come with a regular version and a version with a trapdoor in them. So this, uh, the curved has a trapdoor if you want to uh, use it to get up and down to your tower. Um, 
The same holds true for the battlements, for the regular coronations and the like. Lots, lots of little trapdoors everywhere. Um, you can use them on top of city builder buildings. You can use them on the walls. You can use them on big eight buys. Um, and they're basically interchangeable. Uh, generally, you, we like to use the double-sided rampart crenellations with front and back. But if you want to have like stairs coming up the back of your wall or something, you could put a regular one in line so there's an opening so the stairs can fit in and the like. Now, if you wanted to make these walls look heavier or more fortified, you could just do one little segment here. So we have these pieces are our battlement transition pieces. So they look very similar to they look similar to the regular articulated battlements, but they have this little jut out. And there's a right and a left version of those. That fits the exact profile. Let's do this. This jut out fits the exact profile of our crenellations. So it lines up really smoothly. So it lets you go from crenellations to battlements, the articulated battlements, right? So in this case, we could put it here. And if we just had two of them, we could make a neat little fortified area. This is where you could put like a catapult or um, your big, your arbalist, or some, you know, some sort of siege equipment or something. It's a, a little fortified area. Um, you could also use it if you wanted to transition. If you wanted to make, start putting a bunch of battlements on here, we could transition, you know, take these wall platforms off. Uh, and use this to transition to a run of battlements. If you wanted a fortified area running through, um, you could use one little neat trick you can do is put one there, pop this out, this out. Okay, so we're transitioning in out on either side, and we're going to drop in You can use that to frame your gatehouse. So that's one thing you can do to kind of make your, uh, your inline gatehouse look beefier, more fortified, have some better defenses for your troops there. So this is a, this is a technique we used in our uh, our square corner tower in our Constructed Castle series. Let's say we wanted to put a corner tower here uh, with some stairs up. So the battlements are designed to sit on the castle walls, which are half inch thick. They have these uh, they have corbels on the front and the back. Hold them on there. But on our city builder walls, these walls are only 3 eighths inch thick, so they don't fit as well. If you use a roof platform, they click onto the roof platform and then you can pop them on like that. So you can really you can armor up one of your uh, one of your city builder buildings like such. In this case, I want to do a corner. I want to use the transition pieces, right? So I'm popping this thing on. Right. Let's say I've got a corner battlement there. Uh, so I want to have some stairs to get up onto this thing. So I'm going to use my transition here to give me a nice opening. I'll put my transition here at the other side and then I'll use the regular crenellation Come on, I'll put this one here like that. Now we can run stairs up here in and then stairs back out in line like this. Boom. So it lets you do some interesting openings in your uh, in your battlements if you want to have walls connecting and the like. You can also use this if I wanted to just run, let's go down one level. Let's say I wanted to have this in line with my wall. Uh, now the, the, the crenellations can run really smoothly through to this little corner tower. It's not, once again, another fortified bit. You can throw your catapult or something and the like there. So if you're just putting these on, on any of your buildings, in general, we want to use a roof platform like this. It gives extra support across so none of your, uh, your crenellations won't tip right if you put some pressure in the middle. Uh, in this case over here, we have a big 8x8 platform that's in. 
uh, covering that, ho holding this whole bit up, which also means it's easy to lift off. If I need to lift it off to get in for play, I can lift off that whole section semi-smoothly. If you don't have any roof platforms, you can use dwarven pillars. The rooftop crenellation pack, for instance, comes with two of these. You can throw those in the center of a building uh, and then use it to build on, and that'll hold up the corners of your crenellations there and give them some support in the middle. Plus, you can also just throw it in your dungeon and use it anywhere as a cool piece of decor. It's a big, beefy, strong looking pillar. Particularly useful if you're trying to uh, cover a larger building, a, a, a four by eight or an eight by eight or something like this. Um, you can pop a couple of these down underneath and it'll hold up that whole structure. We have a variety of curved crenellations also for our round towers. So we have four inch curve, which give a nice look like that. If you want to make it look a little heftier, beefier, you can swap out the crenellations for the matriculated battlements. And you can see that overhang just gives, makes the whole thing bigger. And then your defenders can drop rocks and the like down on attackers. Uh, and the same holds true for six inch towers. Also have uh, the curved crenellations and we have them with the uh, operable trapdoor uh, as well as just solid. Just like pretty much all of our battlements and crenellations. And then if you wanted to give this uh, a much more uh, impressive silhouette. You could swap out the crenellations for the full matriculated battlements. And then we could, if we want, you could throw shutters and the like all the way around inside and bedazzle it with a flag. But fundamentally, the, the round crenellations and battlements don't play with the city builder buildings. Uh, you can, of course, put these on top of the city builder buildings. Uh, the towers themselves, but the only the square crenellations and battlements work in a huge variety of ways with your city builder buildings. And I'm sure if you play, you'll find some ways that we may not even have thought of. Now, let's look at the insert slot wall from our castle collection. This is another interesting looking piece of geometry. Uh, this wall lets you put any of our city builder walls into a castle wall. So, if you wanted to spruce up your regular wall, let's pop this thing up and pop in. Let's get some double arrow slit. Oh, so you could put double arrow slit wall in front of your castle. Uh, it lets you put in all sorts of things. You could, let's say you wanted to make a collapsible. Say we wanted to make like a fortified decorative area at the front. Boom, we can put our LED wall and put any of our LED inserts in there. Let's say we wanted to throw some if we want to put some battle damage in our castle, we could use the ruined walls and then that crash out in the middle of a battle. We could slide in because it takes any of our city builder walls. This is the Tudor uh, overhang. And we'll put the slate roof on there. And now we have a, a neat little overhang area. View. Also, use it to add a door. You could use a door or an archway if you wanted to. In this case, a door, and then we could throw some stairs. Another one. Now it could be a little sally gate or a little side entrance on the uh, in your wall. Now, if we want to get a little more advanced, we could also use the same door uh, to connect to the tower. So we could have a, if you take a city builder building, the open back, connect that there. The door now flows in, we'll swap these out. A couple of single-sided crenellations, 
and boom, now we have a connected jutting out tower there that actually connects to the inside of the wall. Uh, we could also use this open arch inside there to have more free flow or just take it out altogether and just use it as an entrance in and out from this tower. Finally, if we want to step things up one more notch, we can use this to connect some of our bridges. Let's take a look at that. Slot in Bridge of Valor and a tower. Boom, let's throw our ramparts. Look in here. And put this thing. So now you could use this as a way to connect a little outrigger tower, right? So you have your main castle over here, you have some sort of side tower here, or it could even be a side building, right? You could have a, an abbey or something connected to the castle wall. It looks particularly good if you build like a ravine here, like this could be on some escarpments going down, or this could be on a little uh, rocky escarpment and we have water coming up against it. Um, but it's a neat way to have like a, a cool little side tower or building off there. Also, we use the same technique with our bridge base wall, right? So this is the, uh, the flat, the CBS bridge base wall. So that lets you put a little balcony there, or if you don't want a balcony on the side of your castle, let's get, we'll use the bridge base there. Say so we took something like this. Let's say we had a uh, want to do a little moat situation. So we do something like that. Let's put some land, dry land over here, and then using our stone bridge, we'll connect that here. Boom. Let's take some down. So this lets you have some sort of grand entrance to uh, your castle, or this could be a side entrance, or you could this could be and exit out to a little side island that's off the seacoast from the, the edge of the castle or the like. Uh, but you can use any of your bridge tricks by throwing this into the modular insert wall. So this wall opens up a lot of building compatibility, a lot of interesting hybrid builds. Excited to see what you do with this thing. So both the castles and cities pieces uh, are true scale and generally working in four inch increments, which means there's a ton of compatibility. Uh, in this case, we've taken some standard uh, castle walls and put a gatehouse in line and then topped it with, uh, this is all city builder upper. This is actually, this segment is our poster and gatehouse set, uh, but we're just using a four inch, a four by four city builder building right on top of the rest of the castle stuff to raise up a nice square tower. You can use that same technique over here. We have a corner tower, uh, which is, it's four city builder building bases uh, that lets you transition. You can also do it in line. You can do a lot of easy geometry because everything's a square, everything's four inches. You can do all sorts of fun zigs and zags. If you want to get a little more complicated, you can introduce some of the uh, the two by four buildings, right? So we pop these guys in. So let's say we wanted to extend this out. Let's pop in our insert wall with a door. Let's get this buttress out of here. And then we're gonna put, I'll have the door here too. Maybe there's a little, it's a little side gate, right? Some sort of little sally port there. Uh, I left the backs off these. There's a little more playing room in there. Throw this one again. So now there's room inside uh, you can connect into this door uh, and you could at this point we could just build out put a roof platform on there to level it out some connellations and five connellations and you can continue the wall on like this uh, or if you want we could go up one higher so let's steal this thing up right you could build up in line uh, we'd probably want to put a, a, a door there, door through, something like that. Uh, you could also use this technique with our towers. So if you built, if you took our four inch towers and do a half, use the half floor, half wall, you can throw them against, boom, 
boom, and make a little, uh, anyway, right, we could do an inline tower. We'll put the single-sided crenellations on the back and then continue this wall line along like that. Uh, you could do what we did with our inline tower set. You can check out the Constructed Castle inline tower set video to show it. We do, we go up another segment. We do another four inch segment here with doors to either side continuing through and can keep going up like that. You could also combine both if you want. If you want to get wild, you could put, you can take these guys again, pop out these walls, put them here and jut this out. Um, and now we're starting to get into that kind of cool Barbican shape. So you can also look at our Constructed Castle Barbican Gatehouse video to see the technique we use for that. You can also do this with a, uh, a full four by four city builder building, four by four buildings with these out in front and you get that cool half round shape. Looks really good right on either side of your gatehouse, right? If you have a pair of those on either side, you get really cool classic Barbican shape. Uh, and if you want to go even further with it, you could, you could get big. Let's, we need, let's do it over here. Let me come on over here. Let's take it from this tower. We could extend this thing out. You could take uh, some more two by fours, kick them out. We'd probably want to pop the uh, walls out. In fact, let's open this up so we can see what we're doing in here. Uh, all right, we could pop the walls out so these are connected. And then, uh, do the same thing, take our six inch towers, these are half, half segments, throw those up against, boom, boom, something like that, and now you have like a larger Barbican uh, shape, right? You do that on either side of your gate and you're gonna have a really majestic looking uh, thing, or you can use it to jut out a cool tower and the like. You cover the, you can cover the whole thing, right? Throw some, uh, throw some crenellations on there. You can go pave crenellations all the way around and you'll have a, uh, where is that corner crenellation? All right, you could cover the whole thing with crenellations up and you have like a really neat, big, half round tower and the like. But fundamentally, because everything is on that two inch or four inch base, you can, there's tons of compatibility with the four by fours, the two by fours, and the various four inch and six inch towers. Just play around, mix and match, and you know, I'm sure you'll find some really cool geometry in there. So, uh, you could also start, you could start building something like this, and then if you wanted, you could continue up the tall lookout tower, right? We could go up and up and up, do something like this. And then if we want for interesting multi-level play, let's put a door here, boom. Then continue this up. And this sort of thing is always fun when there's different levels that the players can play on with doors to go in and the like. You can have a lot of really interesting multi-level dynamic battles. Uh, plus, as the players are sizing it up, they're going to be looking for the different entrances and the ways to go in or what they need to defend and the like. Well, that wraps up today's Builders Masterclass. I hope you learned some tricks and techniques that'll take your castle and city hybrid building to the next level. If you like this, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on this or any of our other quality content here at Dwarven Forge. And please let us know in the comments if there's any other Builders Masterclasses you'd like to see. Thanks so much for watching, and now, it's back to the anvil.